Hi there, I'm Jeff Hastings and welcome once again to SLJ.com. Recognize this device? I bet you do. It's Apple's iPad tablet computer and the prices start at $499 for a Wi-Fi only model with 16 gigabytes of memory. This one happens to have the maximum amount of memory available, 64 gigabytes. It would retail for $699. Now, if you want 3G connectivity as well as Wi-Fi, those models range from $629 all the way up to $829. Let's take a look at the hardware. The thing that makes the iPad experience so immediate and personal is basically when you're using it, it's just you and the screen. It's a beautiful 9.7 inch 1024 by 768 pixel touchscreen, very vibrant, and of course, you control the navigation with your fingertips. There's a built-in accelerometer, and what that does it is it adjusts the orientation. Right now we're in landscape mode. If we flip it over, it automatically goes to portrait mode. So there's really no up and down on the device. You can flip it any way that you want. The only button on the front of the screen is right here. It's the home button. If you press it when you're in an application, it'll take you right back to the main menu. Only three buttons, physical buttons, remain. There's the um, sleep-wake button, which also lets you power up and down the device. There is a screen lock button, so if you want to cancel that accelerometer and lock your um, device into one orientation, you can do that. That's really helpful because often, especially when I was re reclining, I found that I would be sort of reading my content at an angle and I wanted the screen to stay in one orientation, so that's how that is done. The only remaining button is the volume control. Audio, by the way, is delivered in two ways. There are a set of monaural speakers in the back. Can you see that? And you know what? They're not super powerful, but they're certainly ample. I watched a couple of um, full-length feature films on the device. And for personal use, that audio was fine. If you want uh, stereo audio, there is a standard headphone jack as well on the device. Let's look at the bottom of it. Brushed aluminum, slightly curved, so it has a really good feel in the hand. And right now, it's very cool to the touch as well. I like that. Notice what you don't see on the back. You don't see any battery access back here. Um, unfortunately, there's no user serviceable battery in the device. There is a battery in it, of course, but if you want to replace that battery, which is inevitable, you have to basically send, ship it back to Apple uh, for a cost of about $99, and then they'll send you a refurbished model as a replacement. So obviously Apple designed its hardware to be as minimalist and unobtrusive as possible. They tell me that ideally you get so immersed into the experience of doing whatever you're doing on the iPad that you sort of forget the hardware is even there. And I think they did a great job at that. Really, it's all about apps. Uh, this is the App Store, currently displaying a page that's showing some of the um, most popular apps designed both for the iPad and for the iPhone, both of which work on this device. Let me show you. I had the opportunity to download, I would say, about two dozen apps. Let me just highlight some of those for you. If you're a news junkie like I am, you're going to love the iPad. I fell in love with the iPad the moment that I downloaded some news apps, like this one from the New York Times. It's called Editor's Choice. It's a free app, and it allows you to access their free content. Um, tap on a story, it'll come up, and there's a lot of enhanced uh, features above and beyond what's available in print. You have interactive photo galleries, for instance, that you can explore. And there are also links which include video. Um, it's a very rich experience. Some of my other favorites were the Huffington Post app, the Wall Street Journal app. NPR has a wonderful app where you can select their stories, see the text counterparts of those stories, select the ones that you want and make your own tailor-made playlist, um, or listen to an NPR broadcast in its entirety. The iPad is a great tool if you love news. 
The iPad turned out to be a great medium for reading ebooks. You can, of course, adjust the text size. There's a built in dictionary. This is Apple's own iBooks app. It's attached to a bookstore. You're not limited to using it, though. What I really love is that I downloaded apps from Barnes and Noble. I uh, downloaded the Kindle app from Amazon. I downloaded the Kobo app as well. So you can access a bunch of competing bookstores and shop around for the titles that you want at the best prices. Here's a racing game that you steer using the accelerometer on the device. Unfortunately, I'm really bad at it. The iPad comes preloaded with the Safari web browser. It's a simplified version, tailor-made for the iPad. Here's the School Library Journal site. I find that most websites are very, very viewable on the iPad. They seem to fit in pretty naturally as the School Library Journal site does. And when they don't, if you want to zoom in or out, you can use the pinch gesture to do so, and you can place yourself anywhere on a given page. Very nice. If you want to do some input, if you just tap on an input box, your um, keyboard will come up automatically and you can type in. I find that you can type very natural using the virtual keyboard. In fact, Apple sent me, Apple was very nice, they sent me a bunch of accessories. They sent me a physical keyboard that you can dock into this device. It's gorgeous. I never used it because I find that um, typing on the device is pretty natural. Recognize this rascal? I bet you do. It's the cat in the hat in his own iPad app. It really shows you the potentials of interactive books. You can elect to have the whole story read to you, or you can elect to read it yourself. And just because you do so doesn't mean there's no interactivity. In fact, if I select a portion of an illustration, I can get a vocabulary word. House. Or if I want to have a portion of the text read to me, I can just select that portion of the text. The sun did not shine. And it'll read, it that, read that paragraph and so highlight words as it goes. On a cold, cold, wet day. Well, I hope I've given you a little taste of um, some of the things that the iPad does well. It does a lot of stuff well, obviously, and you can tailor make your iPad based on the apps that you elect to download. I think it's safe to say, though, that its real strength lies in its utility as a tool for information consumption for taking in the web in kind of a new way, for taking in news sources using their applications, um, and for ebook reading. This was a big surprise to me, because I have to admit, I had this prejudice about the iPad going into this experience that it was going to be um, a bit unpleasant as a vehicle for extended reading. I've used a lot of e-ink based readers and they have reflective screens, not backlit ones. I thought that the experience of extended reading was going to be uncomfortable on the iPad. It really wasn't and part of that is it has an ambient light sensor that's built in so it can adjust its own brightness based on the amount of light in a room or even outdoors. I took it out into midsummer day sunlight and was able to read an ebook in that environment too. So that was a big surprise. Another thing that got me very excited was imagining the potentials of adapting a textbook to the iPad platform. I think that's a very exciting prospect. Um, imagine a textbook that also had video content, that also had live links, that also contained interactive quizzes, stuff like that. Um, and it just so happens that today I was reading about a company called Inkling that's doing just that. They're in the process of taking a few McGraw-Hill textbooks and converting them into iPad applications. The article speculated that a typical textbook as an iPad app might cost about $85. So by no means cheap, but certainly a richer experience than a print textbook would be, and possibly a better educational tool as well. That remains to be seen. Exciting stuff, great prod product, and I have to say that, I say this very rarely, I'm going to miss this because I have to send it back. It's a very personal experience using the iPad, so you quickly start to feel that it's your very, very own device. My name's Jeff Hastings. If you want more um, information about the iPad, consider visiting this URL. I'm glad you took the time to visit me at slj.com this month, and I hope to see you right here next month.